Okay, here you go. Uh, there were some requests yesterday, some talk about rabbit. And the lady was having a hard time spinning her angora. So I said I'd make a quick video um, to show how I do it. When I pluck my angora rabbit, or if I cut it with scissors, I try not to lay mine down really flat in locks because I don't enjoy spinning that way. It It is a grippy fiber, and it's not hard, but it... it because it's not particularly always a long fiber, it can pull out of your hands really quickly. So I just kind of try to keep mine a little jumbled. You'll see here that some of it will come off in locks um, from the rabbit because this one was plucked. Now I want you to look at, well, look if you want. <laughs> but this is one of the things we were talking about was that some, that, her, oh, she thought her locks were too short. This, lock here. I don't, try, I don't see anything relative to put to. Uh, let's see. I do that? No, that's not going to show you. Here, let me try harder. Okay. This lock here, I know these are very amateur videos, but it's like spinning with a buddy. Okay. This lock here is really only about two inches long. This is not long, and it's kind of a sad story why I have a two-inch long lock, and uh, or locks. I'll spare you the details, but anyways, out of respect to the bunny, I'm spinning this fleece. So, okay, so what I do is keep it jumbled, and then they cling to each other. All angora you need to full after you spin the yarn when it's in a skein, you always need to full it because otherwise it sheds. Everybody sitting next to you will be annoyed that you've got angora in your yarn and you won't be able to wear anything dark with it because it'll be full of fuzz and you'll look like you worked at, as a groomer at Petco or uh, PetSmart or or grooming place <laughs> okay so here you go okay so here I have my lit, my thing and you can just see there's a little fuzz there and I'm going to um, just start the wheel going and see if I could just lay this on here you know what I'm going to stop for a minute and see if I could zoom the camera in because that will probably help that work? Can you do that? No, you can't do that. Can you do that? Okay, how about if I get closer? How about if I zoom? You know what? I'm stepping up with the big boys and I'm getting a $12 um, <laughs> tripod. That's exciting, huh? Off of Amazon. Okay, so here we go. It's a little bit closer, isn't it? Okay, so let's take that off again. So I'm just going to lay my fuzz on top of this other fuzz and start the twist coming in. I let the twist draft past my fingers. I habitually do a little untwisting to see my poorly manicured fingernails. Um, my thumb is going to, I unroll a little bit when I draft. I don't know if I started doing it intentionally because it helped me spin or whether um, it's actually needed, but I have a tendency to do that all the time now, unless I'm long drawing, because then I want the twist to really travel. So here you go. That is a very short staple, and as long as I'm keeping it somewhat fuss messed up, it's catching into it. Let's see if I can do it closer. It's not a real speedy process when the Staples are short, but it um, it is such a pretty yarn. And usually what I do, because I don't enjoy wearing 100% Angora. Most things I don't enjoy having 100% Angora. I do one ply Angora and then one or two plies of and other critters. Okay, let me get my... I'm going to leave the fiber source, well not the fiber source, fiber source is my rabbit. <laughs> I'm going to leave some of this fiber source on my lap. You can see it all mussy. I'm not, um, I don't have locks laying down. 
just about all my spinning techniques are out of laziness, I've, I've come to realize. I don't like to bother carding, so I don't card. <laughs> I don't like to worry about laying all my uh, locks in a, on a, in a row or between paper towels, so I just throw it in a box or a bucket, and there I go. I just laid my fleece, laid it on my, let me get closer, lay it down. And then, um, okay, let me try to experiment with not untwirling. Okay, if I don't untwirl, I get a lot thicker single. So I guess, um, experimenting with you or on you here. If I don't want it, so out right there, I don't want that single that thick because it's a short staple. I want to make sure there's enough twist in it to hold it together. So there. Um, so, yeah, I'll continue with this rabbit. I'm twisting a little bit. Do I want an even staple? Um, I probably am going to go ahead and keep this an even, an even single right here because I want it to go as far as possible. This rabbit passed away. Oh, you want to hear the gory details? Sure, I'll share with you. I've never gotten a nasty letter, so maybe I'll get a nasty letter out of this one. No, I really don't want one. Don't. Please don't. Um, I, I don't handle. I want everybody to like me. I don't handle insults well. Um, I went to feed my rabbits last night and changed their water and whatnot, and one of the rabbits had passed away. She, she was probably pretty old. I've had rabbits for about 18 years now. No, probably more than that. Maybe close to 20, maybe over 20. Yeah, probably about 24 years, maybe. Anyways, uh, oh, yeah, it's been, it's probably been over 24 years. Um, and I, I, this was one of, um, one of my earlier litters. Anyways, I found her passed away and she hadn't been gone that long, so that was probably meant to be, so I didn't try to save her and go through that trauma. I've never given a bunny mouth to mouth, but I would. Um, anyway, she hadn't been gone very long because she was soft and warm and so it was sad. Anyway, so I went ahead and plucked her because I wanted something from her. So if that's disturbing to people, um, I am very sorry. It pretty much wasn't much different than plucking live bunny because my bunnies just lay on my lap, but I had her laying on a chair in a barn why yeah I plucked her I didn't I didn't do a very complete job but complete enough to have something from her okay more information than you wanted I'm sure okay let me change my hook you know I don't have a woolly winder someday maybe I'll want a woolly winder but I kind of like not having a woolly winder because it keeps me um, checking my wool on a regular basis and because I like to mix up my um, bobbins a bit I can know how much I've spun of a color recently here I'll show you can you tell I'm trying to avoid not getting me into the picture there you go yeah, I'm making a multicolored I'm not wanting this to look like any Peruvian sweater or anything so I'll probably um, what will I probably do? I don't know what I'll probably do. So, but I, I'm, I, um, I don't know. No, I won't Navajo play. I might Navajo play. I don't know. If anybody needs uh, instructions on Navajo plying, I'll I could do that. I had done um, some textile classes as a guest speaker. Is that what you call it? Guest something or other um, at a university where my daughter was a daughter-in-law was a well I was just a daughter I love my daughter well anyways when she was attending and taught some hand spindling and dying in a thermos and a few things because I couldn't travel with my bunny but one of the funnest things is going to a show and sitting with a bunny on your lap and spinning straight from the bunny it's it's just um, very soothing and fun 
but I am um, subjected to spin in my bathroom. How funny is that? It's, it's a it's a large. Don't feel sorry for me. It's a large. Um, it's not the toilet area. It's the bathroom area. Um, I have a granddaughter that's allergic to rabbits, and I don't want fuzz around the rest of the place because I love my granddaughter <laughs> and she's little and hasn't started getting allergy shots or anything yet and I don't know if she ever will because I don't know how many things she's allergic to besides rabbits so um, I would get allergy shots for rabbits but I can't expect anybody else to do that okay there you go well, let me see what else can I show you because um, I got if any of you are interested in raising bunnies some people have a really hard time. I don't have a hard time at all, and I hate to admit it, but I don't groom my rabbits, but every time I pluck or shear. Sometimes they have more mats than others, but really not. I think a lot of it has to do with the size cage they're in. If you have a big enough cage, they run around. They're happy campers. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what causes. I Some breeds felt more mat. Matt felt more than others, but I have those breeds and mine still don't. They'll get mats around their legs where they move, where they're agitated, <laughs> where they move a lot, and um, and behind their ears and neck. And you know, the kind of fun thing is, but I mean, it's, it's, I'm kind of a fixer sort of person. I like to fix problems, or, yeah. And what I do with my mats Usually they're pretty, they've got a long staple on them, and then it was when the second coat was coming out, and it, um, because the longer coat was still, the first coat was still on it, the second coat had a tendency to, I think, just kind of bunch on itself. I don't know, but it, it's where it's at, it's where there's, there's movement under the arms and legs and, um, neck and so I'll save those nice lumps and if they're funky from the under the back legs by the mama's tail I'll um, remove the any poopy stuff and and anything if it if there's real long haired rabbit sometimes they get wet with the urine not too much but sometimes toward, before you harvest the fiber because um, this because when they pee they don't sit on the toilet <laughs> anyway so some of it gets on their fur if it's long fur so I'll cut off that part and then I'll save any funky little bits that aren't um, really spinnable and I'll save them for their nesting box because sometimes the moms don't build up that much wool in their nesting box. Sometimes it's winter here. If I've let some mommy's nurse or I want to change it because it's full of a bunch of blood and goo that comes from having babies and I'll change it and use the dry stuff for the nesting box. So I, I save my clean but peculiar little short bits here and there for the nesting boxes. Um, yeah, I, I gotta find out if anybody has any ideas on what to do with all the you know, second cuts of things you get around between rabbits and my sheep. There always seems to be great wool that's this entire should be entirely good, usable for something, but it's not the pristine best part of the fleece. So I don't want to you know, sell that to people. Anyways, let's see. See if I could help. You, see if I could get good shots for I change up. Okay, there you go. Now. I'm going to do something real quick. See, oh, fuzzy bunny, fuzzy bunny. Is that better? There you go. I'm just... I don't know how clear this is. I hope it's clear for you. Alright. And I will... But this is all that... Literally, inch and a half, two inch fiber. So I'll really, really have to pull it. And I can show you that. It's a matter of... Now it's in hot water, now it's in cold water. Now it's hot water, now it's in cold water. With the... um and whack 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 on the counter or wherever you have a system on that 
very sad that that bunny died. I didn't see it suffer anything. It was